The film you see on your screen at this moment was taken from the nose of a United States Air Force reconnaissance airplane flying across country, or down on the deck, as the flyers call it. See, our product points out the what and where in enemy terrain. Now, this uh, military watching, whether in wartime or peacetime, is uh, likely to be resented by an enemy. 25,000 feet in the air, silently lurking in the clouds, aloft 24 hours without rest, a half-ton predator hunts. The Air Force's predator system, its unmanned reconnaissance and strike plane, hunts enemies covertly from the sky, attacks on commands received by satellite, collects reconnaissance for ground troops through remote sensing, and removes enemy leadership with precise geographic target information. All this with revolutionary advances in geospatial technology and a $3.8 million price tag. This presentation demonstrates a prototype of the ethical governor, a key component in the ethical projection of unmanned autonomous force. I, I was digging around and found these uh, research papers that they were doing in uh, in America, in you know, and they had this program called the Ethical Governor, which I found quite interesting. I mean, I thought the title was great, and uh, it's just the, the fallacies involved. You know, how, you know how, how actually could you have a um, you know a code of ethics? That, um, that governed you know, machines that are, you know, basic purposes to um, kill people and uh, destroy property and infrastructure, you know. I mean, they are all called reapers, avengers, um, predators, you know, they, they don't have these names for nothing. So. Uh, even though they are, they're always um, promoted as uh, being great sort of life-saving uh, labor-saving devices, so you know, keep, keeps keeps our people out of harm's way. You know, so, um, eventually they'll be able to operate themselves. They'll be autonomous, and that's 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 why they they claim they have to um, you know develop a, a, a code of ethics. A world-class decision matrix collates the key factors. These are choice of weapons, sustainable losses, both organic and financial and full legal protection for all elements in the chain of command. With no human interference, the final release position is selected, the target neutralized, and the medical facility remains intact.
by the alert intelligence pilot of a rather unique cargo ship. The ship happens to be the ark, and the gentleman's name, Noah. In the Bible, in the 8th chapter of Genesis, we find a passage that reads something like this. Again he sent forth a dove out of the ark. The dove returned to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked up. So Noah knew that the waters had abated from the face of the earth. The note fell that this was aerial reconnaissance. I do know that, sir. Down through history, we've had numerous instances of the value of reconnaissance. Technology keeps getting more impressive and more affordable. An island realtor is taking advantage of that these days and taking his business to new heights. Steve Bruce explains. It's a bird. It's a plane. Er, what the heck is that? It is the DJI Phantom quadcopter. And then on bottom, we've bolted a, a GoPro high-definition camera and a Garmin GPS tracking device. Or, put more simply, this is Michael Posnick's latest tool for selling real estate. For weeks now, he's been traveling around to his properties, putting his helicopter to work, capturing aerial videos and pictures of the surroundings. There's our camera. Within minutes, he has them up on the web for potential buyers to see. But there might be more wisdom in making the other fellow buy for his country. Reconnaissance, you see, is a two-bladed sword. It is not only of great value for fighting and winning wars as we've seen tonight, but we think it can be a powerful weapon in preventing other wars. Just how, think how wonderful it would be if all the big countries of this world could be made to see the wisdom of around-the-clock photography so that everyone knew about the honorable intentions of his neighbors. I'm sure that we would all sleep better every night. Virginia may be for lovers, but apparently it's also for drones. Well, that's according to Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell. He says the drones are so successful at their missions overseas that he wants them for domestic police operations in his state. Obama's made drone warfare his main foreign policy strategy, and many say that drones do a great job at targeting and eliminating those they consider terrorists. But are they really as successful in eliminating, in eliminating terrorism as they say? And what is going to happen when they're implemented by police forces here at home? To answer that and more, I'm joined by John Glaser, assistant editor for Antiwar.com. John, do you think that drones are as successful as they say they are? Well, they're successful in killing a lot of people. They're not successful in terms of strategy. I mean, for years now, throughout the Barack Obama drone war years, um, particularly in Pakistan, but also in Yemen, there have been a few small voices doing real journalism, exposing the drone war as killing hundreds and hundreds of civilians, despite the administration's claims that drones enable them to hit with precision very spe specific targets. 